Hi, good morning, good afternoon, or even good evening, whatever time of day you're watching this. We are in Chelsea at the moment, just gonna go and grab a coffee. Then we've got a site meeting on a project we're doing external decks on. It's a, I think it's a 10, 11 story building. We did external decks on the outs, it's a horseshoe shaped building. And we did external decks project on the outside of the horseshoe a few years ago. And now we're doing the inside, uh, it's a concrete building. So hopefully I can get some of that on video. Um, I'd like to say thank you. We are now over, just over 1,000 subscribers. So thank you to each and everyone that subscribed to our channel. Really appreciate it. Our last video seems to have done quite well, which is absolutely marvelous. Um, once we get some lovely feedback, it does give me the, the encouragement to do more videos. So uh, I really appreciate some of the feedback that we've been given. Um, I really, really love surveyors that say, I'm a surveyor and I love watching your channel even though I do this all week, because I'm exactly the same, you know. Um, if there's, well, there are some other good surveyors channels that I, that I like to watch. Um, it's all interesting, every day is a different day. I know it's a cliche, but we thoroughly enjoy what we do. So actually, just called the this Road, that is the building we did the outside decks on a few years ago. And um, say so we're doing the inside of it today. So I'll catch up with you after we just grabbed a quick coffee from Starbucks. When we did the external decks job on this a few years ago, there was a scaffold put around the whole building, which cost a fair few thousand pounds. There's a, a moat, a single story moat, that was just the other side of the wall where those people are. So from the moat to the roof, I think it's 11 stories. This time it's all being done off cradles. Okay, so here on site, you can see behind me the works that have started and the whole if you call this a quadrangle or not but it's essentially the inside of a horseshoe because over here there's there's nothing that's next door so the property is in need of external decoration as part of those works we've got some localized concrete repairs to do here we've got some spalling going on the concrete so we'll get that off get the steel work completely cleaned up and then put some resin over the top and, uh, and refinish it the whole buildings of concrete construction and you can just about make out in areas where the, the, the concrete's been shuttered and poured. We've got paper, paint blisters. I can't quite reach it because my, even my iPad is just out of view, but we've got a few of these paint blisters and bubbles getting around on the building. So water's got in. That's a good example, actually, that one. Water's got in just above, probably in there and around the window. And um, it's got behind the paint coating causing these blisters and bubbles to happen. So that'll all be dealt with as well. But works have been on site now for about two weeks and we can see with this cradle the whole of this section of cradle where they've stripped it all back done a lot of the paint prep work and here they started doing some of the, um, the cleaning up of the concrete just to try and even it out a bit because it is all a bit of a mess so we're going to try and see if we can get up the top to see what these cradles are like from the top because there's actually no one on site at the moment although the contractors are all signed in, so probably just having a cup of tea. Okay, up at roof level, and I'll be honest, I've never seen one of these before. So this is the cradle system. I've seen a cradle system, but not a temporary one like this. So the cradle's right down on ground floor at the moment, and it's got these beams and counterbalances. Basic physics, I should imagine, because you look at the counterbalances, they're not all that much, but then you look at the beam and the fulcrum, and it's quite some way away. So we've got these two here are for the little, maybe eight foot sh um, cradle on the side. And then we've got this one beam here and the one that's all the way over there that does the big cradle that we just saw from, from ground level. So I wanted to come up and have a look at this because I've never actually seen one in use before. And this is provided by the scaffolders, actually the same scaffolding firm that scaffolded the outside of the building uh, a few years ago. Why we're, why we're up here, we just have to appreciate things like this. We're on a 11 storey roof, or nine storey plus the ground, plus the basement. And we can see over London, so we've got the, the BT Tower there, it's probably not called that anymore. The BT Tower over towards the city, and we can't quite see Docklands in the background, but we have just about there somewhere some pools, and then we're into the city proper. Don't know what that funny shape one is. And we've got the shard over the back, and then we're down into um, that's Vauxhall and stuff like that. So the can't quite, oh, we can see the MI6 building. It's just through there. And then we're into the buildings that are around um, the south side of Vauxhall. Uh, if those cranes and that building was out of the way, we would see this power station and 
actually power stations a bit further around sorry power stations just behind that building there and US Embassy and then because of where we're located we can just about see that big tower thing in the background which I think is down at Crystal Palace correct me if I'm wrong and then as we pan around looking towards now over towards Chelsea yes yeah, bottom end of Chelsea that big brick building and then we're swinging around towards uh, that overlooks Elves Court and so it's in the distance somewhere these buildings are in the way we'll be able to see the, the Wembley Arch so cracking view on a day like today a bit windy but from the other side of the building our cradles are, are running over and then dropping down and the guys have just got back from their cup of tea so we're going to say hello but we can see quite clearly where prep work has been done where the cradle is uh, only to the extent of the cradle so once this entire band is done they'll then move on to the next band and then work their way around the building that way back on the ground floor roof now the chaps are up on the cradle not sure if you can hear that noise but it's a solid concrete wall and they're gunning out some some uh, areas of blown render and blown concrete so horrendous if you're inside but it's got to be done uh, cradles come down for a minute but here we can see some of the reinforcement that's that's uh, corroded the cover there is absolutely minimal um, might be less than 20 millimeters so that's unsurprising that that's corroded so water gets in ideally concrete should have well the engineer will design the cover but it should be at least 40 50 millimeters or so so water gets in corrodes the steel work, as steel corrodes it expands and it pushes the uh, pushes a, a bit of concrete cover off and we've, as we're starting on the building now there's various areas where this is happening so you can't push the steel force reinforcement any further back in so they will clean up all the concrete around it, take it back to sound steel and then get that all completely polished up and then re-coated and then a, a resin repair over the top and then uh, refinish it before the decorations are done. There's going to be a fair few of those. You can see there's one there, there's one there. And once we start taking off cover elsewhere, there's going to be more of them that come up as well. Okay, it's so visit number one done. Um, again, it's behind me. So we're off to Paddington Way now. We've got a project completing over there. It's actually my colleague's project, but um, as I'm out this way, and he's up in uh, Essex today doing a building survey, I've uh, he's asked me if I could pop in. Clients come over, they come over from either Spain or Italy, I can't remember. Um, we're nearing completion on the next one. I'll get some video if I can, but it was a newly renovated block of, I think it's about five or six flats uh, that they let out on the Airbnb. And um, a few weeks after completion, there was a uh, pipe failure in the loft. It happened where the whole building was empty and it flooded every flat in the building. So best part of half a million quid insurance claim, put in there, stripping out all the damp, plasterboard and finishes and, uh, and renewing. So we visited two weeks ago and um, decorators were on site. So it's just final uh, final knockings on that one now. I just got to our Paddington job. Whereas with most stuff, we have our own methods of looking around and ours is generally inside top down. But the loft access hatch was open. So I thought I'd come up and have a look on the roof. Um, something a bit different. This is a London roof or what some people call a butterfly roof. So I'm stood right in the middle of the property and we have a roof slope up to one party wall, central valley, and then a roof slope up to the other party wall. Now I've, I've looked at hundreds, of, well actually probably thousands of properties over the years and uh, this is the first one I've seen where the lead work has been extended up. It's an iPad, so what's that? A good six or seven hundred mil up the sides of the valley. It's clearly not a new lead, lead, um, lead valley but it's been here some time. And there's also um, a wall up the middle for some reason. Not quite sure the reason for that. Uh, some repairs that have been done here. And we've got our old natural slate. This is a tingle. It's a copper tingle. So that's moved at some time. They popped a tingle in there to hold it in place. And there's some vent tiles up here as well. Uh, edge protection on the back, which is good. But a hard point of the gutter. And there's some blockage, so it does need a bit of a clean out and we can see through to other people's as well. Uh, similar design the whole way along. And our chimneys along the party wall. This property is actually around a uh, private garden, which is quite nice to the rear of the property. That's the square where the property's title is, so we're XXX, um, that square. Yeah, we access it through another square at the front of the building, which is a little bit odd. Okay, so Central Valley falls from the rear towards the front. 
up over this centre bit. And then we've got an outlet from, there's a boiler overflow into here, which is not ideal. And then as we get into the front of the gutter, look at this, look, this little fella here is a sycamore sapling. Bane of our lives at home at the moment because we've got horses and these things kill them. So where's our nearest sycamore tree? We've got some big trees over there. Not sure if there's sycamores. Oh, actually right behind us. So it might be where it's come from. And then um, our valley here is blocked. So that does really need a good clean out. And then we've got another pipe here, possibly from um, another boiler condensate pipe because we're on, we've got seven flats underneath us. So uh, there's, there's boilers that do the common parts for all of them for the heating and then the hot water's off electric. But look at this look, load of crap in there that all needs cleaning out. Um, not ideal. And we've got some replacement slates at the front. Another parapet gutter to the front of the building. We can see all the way along the whole row of terraces. And then on this side, similar detail, we've got terracotta um, angular ridge tiles our natural slate with tingles all over the place these ones actually are copper but on the front roof slope someone's replaced these and we've got some lead tingles there so uh, something um, a little bit different I thought I'd just run up here just to have a look see what's up here to get a little bit more on film we've got um, slate dormer cheeks some gaps there but we can just see our, our lead secret lead work um, which will be a, a soaker that's turned up around the back to uh, discharge any water down the back and the soaker comes out of the front just here Charlie over my shoulder is learning which is brilliant um, and then our lead roof this is a uh, just a flat lead roof angled back towards the main roof someone's had a bit of a bodge of some tiles there got modern composite tiles mixed in with a slate not a listed building um, but on the front here, this is all in pretty shit condition, to be honest with you. Probably shouldn't say that on video. But um, I'm surprised it's not leaking inside. And our door don't even close. I think we have to slam that from the inside. So uh, anyway, we're here to look at the progression of the works inside. So uh, best we crack on with that. Now, I'm in the roof space now. You can have all the quality and the expense in the world. But sometimes it all comes down to how good a fitting is on a copper or a plastic pipe. One of these failed, come down through the building over a weekend and caused best part of half a million pounds worth of damage. So this is one of seven flats that's been uh, refinished. Uh, things like ceilings down, new floors, uh, new wall linings where everything's got wet. One of the main reasons being this is all plasterboard. There's some electrics to finish off here. It's final snagging's yet to be done then a week or so from completion. But what I'm going to try and do now is put up our Matterport image. So we do 3D scans of buildings like this. And in this case, we've put all our damp meter readings on here. So we can see how the water's come down through the building, saturating everything as it goes. And uh, like I was saying upstairs, this happened over the weekend. So no one knew anything about it. They come in on a, a Monday to do whatever and uh, to find literally the whole building from the fourth floor down to the basement absolutely saturated. So plasterboard does not manage water at all well. It's two layers of cardboard with a la central layer of gypsum. So as soon as any of those get wet, it deteriorates and fails. So that involved fairly extensive strip out of this property. But we're now on the last knockings of getting the whole thing fitted together, uh, finished, sorry, we put back together. Light fittings to go in, none of the powers on in any of these rooms. When we're snagging, we'll be looking at things like this. Um, if the doors rub on the floor, any little bits and pieces that the builder either needs to finish or needs to redo again. So not gonna go around all the flats, but it's not a bad finish. So just arrived at uh, the next, next inspection. This will be the last one of the day. So three site visits today. This is a fire damaged property. We're dealing with um, electrical fire up in the roof space. Water came down through, um, so it's affected the, the ground floor parts and areas as well. So this is a living room. Got some sanitary wear on site that needs to be refitted because that wasn't damaged. Some set shower trays that were, that need to be um, binned now. And the ceiling is tacked, ready for skimming pretty much. Just a little bit of board to put in the middle. Um, but I think there's a client change. We're going to pop some downlighters in rather than two ceiling roses. 
fair bit of materials on site, some sanitary wear, tiles for the bathrooms, and just out in the hall, actually in here, it's still got some skimming to do, I'll skim the ceiling, um, but they've still got some uh, board skimming to do to the walls. And there's some uh, multi-finished plaster. Some builders will use a board finish plaster, some will use a multi-finish. Doesn't really make much difference, it's essentially similar stuff. I think board finish gives you a quicker set time because it is designed just for plaster board. Bit of a gap there, but the bottom one's not fixed, so that needs to be remedied. Well, it needs to be fixed, sorry. Into the bathroom, base coat plaster's done, shower enclosure's done, uh, moisture resistant plaster board in the back of the shower enclosure. Don't really have an issue with that, it's either that or hardy backer. Um, and then we've got solid plaster to the external walls, ceilings skimmed and down lighters all, all fitted. And then here we've got 32 mil waste for the basin and then 15 cold for the uh, 15 feed for the cold, 15 feed for the hot, and then 22s on the bathroom waste, but they should on the bathrooms, but they should have um, caps on dust caps because all the crap that's gonna be floating around in the air. So um, they're gonna need to flush the system through anyway, but that might be a problem. Into this bedroom. This is all fully skimmed out now. Coving's fitted. Electrics are in for the uh, first fix electric. So this really now is just for decoration. Joiner is done. So yeah, they, they can uh, be cracking on with decorations in some rooms. Ideally, they'd want the whole house to be skimmed. So I should imagine the plasterers would be here to, um, well, not here today, but they just got to finish up in some areas. Uh, main bedroom, this is where the fire was above here. Again, all fully skimmed, coving is up. So this is again ready for decorations to start. Like that said, there's a bit of making good where that coving and the plaster's been taken off up there. So that's something to do. Doors hung, but no door furniture as yet. And then into the ensuite. Again, this is waiting. Uh, skim coat plaster. Unless that's smooth enough to tile straight onto. And then um, shower enclosure is there. And then we've got a um, branch for, this is on the main soil stack. So we've got a branch that serves the ensuite, sorry, the main bathroom next door, and another branch that serves the WC in this room. And that there's a shower waste for the base, uh, sorry, shower waste. Uh, it's a 40 mil diameter, and the stack will run up and go through the roof to vent. And then again, 15 cold feeds. These are the caps I was just talking about. They should certainly be on everything. Um, on the 22 feet for the bath, you've got some isolation valves and baller fix valves. They're turned off to stop any crap going down into the system. So it's progressing, you know, it's not finished. It's a site, it's progressing, it takes time. You can't make an omelette without cracking a few eggs, but it's all got to be done and it's all good work in progress. Another bedroom, we took the roof off the house, so it meant all the raw ceilings had to come down. All skinned, coven done, again ready for decorations. These bedrooms have got a uh, little one suites of them as well. So electric first fix is done. And uh, the reason why we've got, um, just put my iPad down, the reason why we've got power above here is for the isolation. So this will be three core and earth. One, two, three core and earth. From memory that is blue, black and gray sleeved cable. Um, so this provides a permanent supply up to the extractor fan um, and here will be uh, an isolation uh, switch for it and then normal power in this case for lighting this is one and a half mil twin and earth so the twin is the blue flexed cable on that side of the blue insulated cable and the brown on that side and the earth in the middle power is exactly the same but that is uh, 2.5 millimeters that's the cross-sectional size of the cable doesn't really matter you know there's the main cable size for electrics is oh, sorry the main cable size for lighting is 1.5 uh, sometimes one and for power will be 2.5 but if there's slightly more demand it'll go up to four okay so thank you for joining me on a bit of a day out looking at some projects and um, i'll see you on the next one